Hi Stampers, it's Lisa here with today's Facebook Live. We're going to be working on actually two cards today using the Snail Mail Suite and the Snailed It Bundle, which is part of that suite with the Snail Mail DSP. I wanted to do two of them because they are so easy to do. We're going to have plenty of time and it'll show you some uses for our rectangle postage stamp punch. We have this card right here. And this is our snail mail DSP. And I punched it three times and then I punched this out of cardstock and stamped on it. And then of course it's stamped in the background and we have an inside. And then I have a second card and that's this one here. And this again uses that rectangular postage stamp. And then this is the Stitch So Sweetly dies. I think those are going to be my new favorite since we can't use those nested labels anymore. And then that's the inside. So it's going to be a fun day. So here's our two cards. We're featuring that rectangle punch. And one of the things that got me started on that, I think I told you last week, is every catalog I make what we call swatch books. And those swatch books are just three by six pieces of paper. And they're great for me to have in class because it's a way for me to show you what they look like in real life. This paper, oh my gosh, that looks so much better in real life than it ever looked in the catalog. And so this is a paper share. And so I've got all these little pieces of like every catalog for the last several years. And I found out that if I take the punch, if I take this apart, I can get this punch to go across this four times and still leave me with a strip down the side. And so it's a great way to use up small pieces of DSP that you thought were just too small to use anywhere. This is one of the cards I did with it. This is using those, you know, four punches. And then on the inside is that strip I was talking about. Another thing I did was I took and cut the three by six into a two inch and a one inch strip and then mounted them on the card this way. So it's just, you know, I was trying to find ways to not have to throw out small pieces of DSP, right? We spend a lot of money on our products and we want to be able to use them all. And so that's always my goal is to show you guys how to make the most out of your products and how to make beautiful cards the easy way. Let's go ahead and get started. I didn't pre-cut these things because I figured they're so easy, we can just cut them on the fly, right? I'm gonna start out with a Coastal Cabana piece of paper. I keep these in my drawer in a hanging file cabinet. And I have each color has its own little hanging file. Then I have the scraps that are held in this Pendaflex. I have full sheets in my file folders, and then if I have an extra pack, that goes in here as well. And this is really handy. Because I find if I keep my little scraps in those little things, I'm much more likely to use them. When I bunch them all up together and mix all the colors, even if I'm mixing all the blues, all the reds, all the greens, I still don't use them all. So I find that if I put them in these little packs and keep them with my original color, when I come down to like, I'm gonna need, I think this is a two and a quarter inch strip of white. I can look for that in my bag. This was a one inch strip that I cut in half and then just bordered on it. So I'm gonna be able to pull that out of here nice and easy and not have to cut up a brand new sheet. When you start a card, obviously, we're gonna start by scoring at the four and a quarter mark, and then we're gonna cut at the five and a half. And this is gonna make it go the standard way we normally have cards go, but you can also do it the other way. You can score at five and a half and cut at four and a quarter, and that's just gonna make your card fold a different direction. Kind of a portrait landscape version. So, these are gonna be our two card bases. Oh, I wanted to show you. Another thing I often do is I take my card base and you wanna take the valley, which is where we scored in, and we're gonna turn the valley into a mountain. So I'm gonna butt it up against the edge here, and then I'm gonna arch in and butt this up, and then I'm gonna push flat. And that makes sure that I'm totally even down here at the bottom. So there's our two card bases. I want to, this is four inches, or four and an eighth, 
And so we're going to go 5 and 3 eighths, which is going to give us the 1 eighth border. Again, if that freaks you out, go ahead and do this at 4 inch by 5 and a quarter. And so I need the piece that's going to go in the middle here. And this is 3 and a quarter by 4 and a half. So that's only four and a quarter. That's not going to be wide enough. So I'm going to go four and a half. And then three and a quarter. And look at that. That's going to give me a perfect strip to use as a sentiment on a card, you know, coming in from the side. Maybe that'll look great flagged on the end. And we have this new nifty punch that actually does the flagging for you both directions, inside and out. And they have the marks at half inch, three quarter inch, and a full inch. And all you do is line it up in there, push it in. And see, this is one inch, so it's fitting in there perfectly. And you can see the back, and it's not wasting very much paper, which I like. And so there is a perfect sentiment. So I'm just to pop that back into my little folder here with all my other little pieces. And I can use that on another card. I showed you that I have the a card base eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. This piece on top is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. This piece here is four and a half by three and a quarter. And then I just need this cut out with the stitch so sweetly dies. And so I have that. I did a red and a white this time. I have them over here to show you how beautifully they line up. Now, this is just layering rectangles that have the stitching and the scallop on the edge. And then I just love these. For some reason, I tend to use them a lot because they, they match up, but they're not exactly exactly. And I love to stick like a little rhinestone over off to the side or something. It just gives it a little extra pop. So I have those ready to go. And then I have quite a bit of our DSP over here. And so what I want to do is I want to cut four postage stamps and I want them to go lengthwise. So when I take my punch, I want to make sure I'm in this way so that it is landscaped as I'm punching. And I'm going to try to get it as close to the edge as I can. So we're using as much of our product as possible. Here you can see how the fourth would actually fit on the three by six piece of paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this to our card base. And again, if you have problems with the eighth inch border, you can either cut it at the quarter inch or you can use your liquid glue so you have what I call wiggle room to get the layer straight for you. And then this piece, I wanted to find the middle. And so out of my four and a half, it's going to be two and a quarter. And you don't have to do this. I just know a lot of times when I eyeball stuff, people go, oh, I could never do that. Well, you could, but if you don't want to, <laughs> here's how you can do it. I just take this ruler, which has the zero in the middle. This is a Tim Holtz ruler, and I use it often, and it's mentioned on my blog and has a link to Amazon. I have an associate. Uh, an affiliate link where if you purchase through my affiliate link I get a little bit of a I don't want to call it a kickback but you know what I mean a little referral fee yet it doesn't charge you any extra it's all the same price it just is a little thank you for my sending you there for your purchase so now I'm just kind of you know eyeballing where the middle is and this is just going to give me an idea of my four corners and so this you know you could even draw the straight line all the way across both directions if you wanted to if that makes you more comfortable you can eyeball it if that's what you want just giving you some options I do it with a light pencil it erases very easily but you can see how my just having those four little marks kind of gives me an idea of how wide my border is going to be and so I'm going to come in with liquid glue So I'm just going back in and I'm just erasing those little tick marks. So I just put that down with some stamp and seal. Again, when you use this, you're going to roll and you're going to flick it a little. 
roll and then flick it because you want it to snap off up here. You don't want it down here. I say this all the time, but I'm still hearing complaints of people saying, mine's unraveling, mine's getting sticky, you know. And I'm sorry, there's a little bit of a change from our snail because this is just so much stickier and thicker. It takes a little more of a snap to break it off. And another thing you want to watch out for is, you know, they do come apart. And I always check in here to see that there's no excess goop. See how there's kind of like some little sticky stuff here? I'll go in here every so often and clean with rubbing alcohol or Goo Gone or Undo, just some kind of sticky remover and get all that out of both sides because it's kind of a magnet for pulling more sticky. You know what I mean? So you just want to make sure there's none of that there to try to draw attack attention away from your refill thing. There's only one direction that goes, so you can't mess that up. And the case fits both our seal and our seal plus. Okay, back to the card. So I've got our stitched so sweetly shape and then the white shape that's gonna go in the middle. And then you'll notice this looks already colored and that's because I cut it out of the designer series paper using the dies that come with this set. This is the stamp set and you can see this is that stamp, but that is also in our DSP. So I just took the snail die and laid it over the DSP and cut it out. And because I laid it flat onto here, I just went ahead and used liquid glue. If I was gonna pop it up on a dimensional, I would cut out a second one with cardstock because our cardstock is much thicker and sturdier. And if you put that behind the snail and then pop the two pieces together, he's gonna be much more sturdy and not get kind of mucked up in the mail. So just a tip. Here's that little snail. So he's ready to go in here. And then I'm gonna pop it up on dimensionals. And you can see I have a, a piece of our adhesive strips in here. And I don't know if you can tell, but the adhesive strip is just a touch deeper. So they can't be used together because they're not the same thickness. They're both wonderful products, both do awesome things, but don't try to combine the strips and the dimensionals because they're not gonna be the same height. So there's the outside of our card. Now for the inside, all I did was I took our little hello stamp and then I cut a strip. I had noticed as I was looking at it, you know, you can't really tell, I mean, you kind of can, but as I was cutting it, I realized that if you go straight across, they're all kind of in a line. So I was able to cut, I think it's a one inch strip, but three quarters of an inch, gets you just one row of mushrooms. And it worked great for just a little bit of accent down on the bottom, and then I just stamped a hello. So it's done in the gray and the red. One's a little more subtle, but I think they're both great. Do you guys have a preference on one or the other? And for this one, like I said, I need that strip of white. See, I kind of work my way through my scraps. Two and a quarter. And it's going to go by five and a half. And I'm actually going to go a little bit over because I'd rather go over than be short. And I can always trim from the back side. And I'll show you how we do that. And then, like I said, I needed some little strips to go top and bottom. And so these are a little wide. I could probably cut one of those in half, but I just want some to poke out from behind. And again, I'm leaving them long. Don't panic. You know, I just want to make sure that I have enough. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to make my little mark in the middle. So since this is going to be five and a half, I'm thinking two and three quarters is going to be halfway. And this is just for the alignment of our postage stamps to make sure we're kind of centered. So there's three of those. And then, like I said, we're going to stamp onto white and then we're going to punch that out. So I'll bring in some white, and then I stamped this Happy Mail Enclosed. And I'm just mixing up the colors a little bit. Oh, what do I keep the scraps in? These are Pendaflex folders. 
99849. And if you want, send me a PM and I'll send you the link to them on Amazon. Okay, so I'm just lining that up and kind of centering it and punching it out. And now I'm going to align them on here. Now, like I said, I'm going to take and start in the middle. And I'm kind of giving, I don't know, a quarter inch, you know, our normal border between the two of them. And I'm using those little marks to know that I'm in the center. Because the postage stamps, the four of them, once I add the border, they're actually going to be a little bit long. But that's okay. Again, we can trim it off from the side. Nobody's going to notice. So you can see it went over just a little bit, but that's okay. We'll just trim that off. And then I wanted the thing to pop a little, so I'm putting just a thin line of glue and then putting this on there and a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And we'll get our border. And see, it's still a little bit long, but that's fine. Like I said, we're going to come in, we're going to cut it off. It will be fine. And I thought it needed a little something. I mean, it looks good like that, but I wanted a little extra something. But I didn't really want to use another piece of DSP. I could have. But I thought if I just used the same color ink as my cardstock is, and I just gave it some little stamps in the background, that would help. Now, I didn't really necessarily want the words, and so that's why the snail's at the bottom. So I'm going to come in with Postal Cabana ink, and I'm trying to go random. Some of you may know I spent like 30 years in the accounting field, and random is not in my realm of capabilities. I'm learning. So then when I put this piece on, it's going to cover up the words in the middle. So there we go. Now this one I actually colored with a little bit of pool party and then I stamped on the inside and I actually gave him a coat of Wink Estella. I don't know if you can see that. But doesn't that look pretty? I mean, because snails are slimy, right? So they've got to be a little bit shiny from the slime. <laughs> so when I added Wink Estella, I really thought it gave it that extra little oomph. So there's the two cards that we made today. So I mean, we're barely a half hour in and we've made two cards. Thank you for joining me. Again, I'm, my name is Lisa. I'm with Queen Bee Creations. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And I do appreciate you being here each Monday at 2.30 as we go live with a fun, free card class. Thanks for joining me. Bye.